Hi, this is Mark Weitzman, and welcome back to this um, deeper look at the covariance of the Schrodinger equation under a Galilean transformation. This is part two. And I forgot to say last time that most of this material is from Ballantyne's book on quantum mechanics, a modern development. section 4.3. So last time we established the following equations that under Galilean transformation psi transforms as some kind of phase transformation and f is a real function. We also established partial derivatives. The partial of x is equal to the partial of x prime. The partial of t is equal to minus b, the partial with respect to x prime plus the partial with respect to t prime. I'll write down the Galilean transformation again. x equal x prime plus b t prime. t equal t prime. And so we have to substitute these two things into the Schrodinger equation. We're working in one, dim one spatial dimension. I'm using w for the potential instead of V because I'm using V for the velocity of the reference frames. So in making this um, substitution we're also going to be assuming that W of X comma T is equal to W prime of X prime comma T prime. Sort of assuming the potential doesn't transform and this can be justified. So now it's just a matter of doing some math crunching and uh, against my better judgment I'm going to try and do it all. So let's start. Minus h bar squared of 2m. Second partial with respect to x we can write as a second partial with respect to x prime. Then we have here e to the if. I'm not going to show all the arguments. And remember, psi prime here is just psi in the transformed reference frame. It's not a derivative or anything. Okay. Plus w e to the if psi prime equals i h bar partial with respect to t prime minus v the partial with respect to x prime applied to e to the if psi prime. Okay. Let's just work through these. I'm going to do one at a time. Partial with respect to x prime. Now here we're going to get i the partial of f with respect to x prime e to the if psi prime plus e to the i f partial of psi prime with respect to x prime plus w e to the i f I'll put this as w prime now psi prime this is equal to i h bar Let's apply this one at a time. Get I partial of F with respect to T prime e to the I F psi prime plus e to the I F partial of psi prime with respect to T prime minus I V. Um, the IH bar, and we get minus IV 
partial of f with respect to x prime e to the i f psi prime and the final term is minus b e to the i f partial psi prime with respect to x prime okay now we just have to work out this part minus h bar squared over 2m now I'm going to get i second partial of f with respect to x prime e to the i f psi prime minus we're going to get an i f and an i, and an I there we're going to get an i and i and a partial derivative with respect to x it's minus the partial f with respect to x prime now squared e to the i f psi prime plus have again i partial of f with respect to x prime e to the i f partial of psi prime with respect to x prime then I get plus I I lost my train of thought here let's see where was I um, this is what happens when you lose your train of thought here Okay, let's go. I have the second partial e to the i of psi prime. Then I get this squared e to the i of psi prime. And I have i e to the i of partial. Okay, so I've gotten rid of all the terms there. Then I have plus i partial of f with respect to x prime. e to the i of partial of psi prime with respect to x prime. And then I get plus e to the i f second partial of psi prime with respect to x prime. Plus w prime e to the i f psi prime. That is going to be equal to this over here. I'm not going to write it. It's the same thing. Okay. So now, first thing we can do is every term has an e to the i f in it. So let's cancel all those out. e to the i f, 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 e to the i f. Okay, that's good. So now I'm going to get minus h bar squared over 2m i second partial of f with respect to x prime psi prime minus the partial of f with respect to x prime squared psi prime and then two of these terms are the same these two plus 2i partial of f with respect to x prime partial of psi prime with respect to x prime Then I took a term out here, this, this term over here, I'm going to write, I'm going to write this term over here separately, plus minus h bar squared over 2m, second partial of psi prime with respect to x prime, plus w prime psi prime. This is equal to up here. And the first term I'm going to write i h bar, I'm going to take this term over here, partial of psi prime with respect to t prime, and I'm going to put the other terms, minus h bar i times i is minus 1, partial of f with respect to t prime, psi prime, plus b h bar, partial of f with respect to x prime, psi prime minus i h bar b partial of psi prime with respect to x prime. 
Okay. Now, this, these three terms are just the Schrodinger equation and the transform system. So this is what we want. So all these other terms have to add up to zero. So our final equation, this is our goal in this video, is this equation, I with the two here, psi prime. Seems pretty complicated, but interestingly, the actual solutions will be very easy. Now I'm bringing these terms on to the other side. So this is our final equation. If we can satisfy I left out a bracket here. If we can satisfy this equation, then we will have shown that this equation holds, or that the Schrodinger equation is covariant, it has the same form in both reference frames, the prime and the unprimed reference frame. Now, this looks like a horrible equation, but remember, f is, we can choose f. The only constraint on f is that it's a real function. And in the next video, we'll see that these lead to some very simple equations with a very simple solution. So I'll continue this in part three.